So updated builds for all perk decks in 2020. This is video number 16 out of 21. In case you're wondering, the ones done so far and that are linked in the playlist in the description below are... Rogue Grinder, Anarchist, Hacker, Sociopath, Kingpin, Burglar, Hitman, Stoic, Ex-President, Muscle, Crew Chief, Gambler, Sicario, and Crook. For continuity purposes, basically, Payday 2 is being updated again. I'm making up-to-date builds for all 21 perk decks. Holy shit. These are all Death Sentence 1 Down difficulty builds. Playing less than that and you're a pussy. Each build will have some crossovers or will have Inspire and Nine Lives Aced. Painkillers Aced is not better than Quicks Fixed Aced. Facts. Each build will be using Max Infamy with a video on screen and linked in the description. Going to try and use some different weapons to accentuate the builds and make them fun. Not every build will have the Isma shotgun, even though I would like them to. All builds will have been tested for at least two minutes in order to validate my claims. I will give some playstyle ideas and some map suggestions where the build may find you more success. Click like if you like this video and subscribe if you are new. The perk deck for this video is Armourer. Now you may think, or you should probably think, that a perk deck named Armourer would carry the most armour you could possibly get in the game. But remember, this is Payday 2 we're talking about here, so in fact it's second. I'm sure you know what the first place goes to when I'm talking most armour, so I won't say it. But feel free to comment it below. Now armor of course gets us more armor, but does it give enough? And is there more to this one that makes this deck a little more special than a simple stat boost? Let's take a look. So as you know, or can guess, we do get the obligatory armor increase from the deck of 35%. We also give our teammates a little bonus too, reducing our armor recovery by 10% along with your teammates. You're welcome teammates. The other part of this deck is what steps this up to be a pretty solid perk deck and is mimicked by the anarchist perk deck that came after it. Two seconds of invincibility once your armor is depleted. This means once your armor is fully broke, your health is immune from damage, other than if a sniper broke your armor inflicted health damage at the same time. This invincibility has a cooldown of 15 seconds. Of course, the biggest question here is, as always, when looking at Death Sentence build, is the armor enough to sustain more than one shot from our common, friendly, heavy swaps? Well, in this case, the answer is yes. Knowing the common hit on Death Sentence is 225 points, with armor fully maxed out and when the ICTV, so including Iron Man Basic, we hit a maximum of 280.5 armor. Enough off the bat to soak up two hits, the second hit of course fully breaking out armor and initiating the two seconds of invincibility. One thing that a lot of players like to do with high armor builds is to couple that with damage reduction in order to increase the amount of shots your armor can take. Sadly with armor this just falls slightly short. Taking the common 225 damage again, if we add on the Frenzy skill for a 25% damage reduction and even layer in the Situational Underdog Ace skill for 10% more reduction, it doesn't reduce the heavy SWAT damage enough to gain the ability to take one more hit. When actually applied, the combo of Frenzy and Underdog Ace give a 33% damage reduction. This mitigates the heavy SWAT hits to around 150 points. We would need our armor stat to be a little over 300 in order to take an extra shot, so it would still be a two-shot armor break. You could argue that not every single shot is 225 hit points and therefore this could work. And you're right, medics, cloakers and distant dozers and some early cops in heist don't deal as much but as the heist progresses it's way more common. With that out of the way, let's get into the skills, the weapons and all the other goodies. We will be grabbing Iron Man Ace in order to max out our armor so the ICTV it is. As mentioned before, this brings our armor statistic up to 280.5, that is including Iron Man Basic. For weapons we ain't going with shit guns shotguns. I'm staying away from my favorite LMGs and we're not touching the best assault rifles. Instead we're going to spice things up a little and go with some DMR assault rifles. Until their ammo pickup got slashed these bad boys were pretty awesome. Depending on which DMR you use, well they're all pretty wank but some just have a very slight advantage than the others when it comes to ammo pickup. If you're not played with DMR rifles or just have no clue what they are, well basically it's a modification available on a handful of assault rifles that grant them a larger damage increase but slashes the amount of ammo you hold and also the amount you pick up per box. They are fun to use and highly effective especially if you can hit headshots and not waste ammo. It's also good to throw some skills by the way of assault rifles in order to make them a little more usable and give it a solid sidekick secondary in case you blaze through all of your ammo stack. Anyways I'm going for the G3 with a DMR kit and modded like this for 100 stability and 100 accuracy. For secondary, I'm running the Micro Uzi for its great ammo pickup and fire rate. Running this alongside an assault rifle with skills to match is a great partner, as a lot of the AR skills translate to SMGs, modded like this. For throwable, the concussion as usual, deployable med bag, and melee something stunny for those cloaker charges. 
In Mastermind, taking the usual runner Inspire Ace to shout our fallen teammates up, loosening our usual Joker skills in the next section to just Joker Ace and Partners in Crime Ace. This only allows one Joker, but also allows them to do more damage while still getting us the 30% health increase and 10% movement speed increase. You could forego the Joker Ace skill here to save 4 points, they just won't do as much damage, but an easy sacrifice if you don't like them. Next, I'm taking Stable Shot for stability, then Rifleman in order to get aggressive reload, shaving off 15% of our reload time of our weapons. In Enforcer, all the way up to Iron Man Basic for the ICTV armor unlock and 30% more armor. By ways of Resilience Ace for flashbang help, Transporter Ace for bag throwing and movement with bags, Shock and All Basic for armor recovery, and then the important Bullseye Basic for getting armor back for headshots. And with this perk deck, you'll have 2 seconds of invincibility to land this one. Then, like I said, Iron Man Ace. The last skill in Enforcer is Scavenger Ace, being able to pick up ammo from slightly further away but also the slashed ammo pickup on the DMR, an additional ammo box every 6 kill is minimal but can only help, unless your teammate picks them up of course. In Technician it's Steady Grip Ace for stability and accuracy, Lock and Load Basic for hip fire ability then Surefire Ace for more ammo in the mag but also the ability to pierce enemy armor with our bullets. This is especially important when we take Body Expertise Ace and apply 90% of the headshot damage multiplier to the body shot. These are high damage numbers we are playing with when looking at the DMR rifles, so less bullets to kill our enemies if we land them. Next is parkour and duck and cover basic for mobility skills, stamina and speed, definitely needed with the ICTV armor. Then it's second wind basic and optical illusions basic. Second wind in order to gain a movement speed if we want to run when our armor breaks and optical illusions for a non-target chance. Again, these last two fall into the optional list if you prefer to spend elsewhere. Lastly, it's nine lives ace for an extra down before custody. So that's it, something a little different, a DMR rifle armor build, a lot of fun to play, and although a little similar to Anarchist, not as much armor, so be careful. High damage, low ammo pickup on the primary, but a lot of skills to help. If you want to be like every other build, throw on your shotguns and just transpose all the oppressor skills into the shotgunner tree, or leave them where they are and grab an LMG, that's your call. Maps for this one, a lot can be fun, it's a fun deck. Close quarters are a lot easier than open maps due to the nature of the difficulty and the amount of cross map hits you'll take when you're in the open, but open maps are viable with this deck too. Shut 